My goal has been for the better part of the last decade is I'm trying to help people do their best work ever. We all have that person in our lives who seems to be connected to everyone. You know, that person with the perfect elevator pitch, that person who knows how to work a room, that person who's the quintessential networker. Don't you just hate them? My goal in all of my work is to get good ideas, evidence-based ideas, out of the ivory tower and get them into the corner office, wherever work gets done. The most potent human motivator, do you know what it is? It's progress. The ability to feel that I'm making progress on a job, the ability to feel that I'm making progress on my overall career, the ability to feel that I'm part of an organization that's moving forward every single day there's a, a new study published. And so I am trying to learn and then put out the lessons from that. For the past several years, I've been studying the corporate and entrepreneurial leaders who question the conventional wisdom about how to run a company. When we show up to, to take the stage, it's not 55 minutes that were pre-rehearsed before. It is what is the current state of the research? What is the current state of what we know about this issue? And I've spent the last several years searching the world of network science to look at what are the things that are universally true about networks. In one study, participants were asked about a time where they had to reach out and make a new professional connection. And the participants who had to do that were more likely to experience subconscious thoughts of getting clean. So translate, networking makes us feel dirty. I spent six years as a full-time business school professor. And the thing that I've, I've learned to love, I call it the eyes moment. When the insight is delivered, the takeaway is there, and people just get it. And the thing we forget in business school a lot, we forget that every organization is a group of humans trying to do something. And as long as you have that, you're gonna have, you're gonna have human issues, and you're gonna have human solutions. So uh, there's a lot of great researchers, business school professors out there, and there's a lot of great storytellers. But what I think most audiences need is, is both. They need to understand the research. They need to understand this is what we know about how humans work. But they need a, an example, a story that makes it easier to remember. Uh, and then they need, and this is something I think you only get, truthfully, I got from my years working with undergrad business students. When you get the do these two or three things afterwards in order to make that change in your life or in your work, that's when you really have an effective combination. So try this. Make a list of four or five people you haven't talked to in a while. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of your friend list on Facebook and reach back out to those people. You don't have to have an agenda. In fact, that's what makes it awkward. Just reach out and see where the conversation goes. You'd be amazed. My, my favorite thing in the world is when someone comes back to me and they say, you know, I remember the story of, and it could be the story of a person that we talked about in the talk. It could be, I remember you told me that this company and how they do things. And, you know, what I know is that I chose that story because it's in line with the science that they probably don't remember how the study was conducted. But if they remember that story and then they remember the takeaway, the behavior change, then, then I've done my job and then I know the change has lasted longer than just that 60 minute keynote. Great leaders don't innovate the product, they innovate the factory. What are you going to do moving forward to innovate your own individual factories? Thank you all so much for having me.